That comment from the latest of the do-it-yourself interviews that Moscow police are dropping almost every day and again asking and answering their own questions with no reporters allowed and it's very important to point that out. Earlier, Christy Gonzalez, Kaylee's mother, said in an interview that her family learned about that vehicle at the same time and in the same way that everybody else did with the press release. The victim's families have long complained about a lack of information from authorities. And on that front, Mrs. Gonsalves related to NBC a bizarre and disturbing incident involving the coroner, Kathy Mabbitt. She says that she herself has never spoken with this coroner, but that her 17-year-old daughter has. That would be Kaylee's teenage sister. She says the coroner spoke on the phone with the teenager and gave graphic details of how her sister was murdered when asked. To help break all of this down, I want to bring in Bobby Chacon. He is a former FBI special agent and expert in criminal investigations. He also happens to be an attorney. Bobby, thank you for, for being here. So much to go over with you. First, about that issue where the coroner tells a 17-year-old sibling uh, what exactly happened to her sister. That doesn't sound like protocol to me. No, it's it certainly is very bad practice. I, I've never heard that before. Uh, talking to a minor family member, sister of a victim. I mean, that's that's poor practice. I mean, the, the all communication should be consolidated. It should be one point of contact with the authorities to the families. They should be updated on a regular basis. Um, this way, you do, they're not going to three or four different sources. The coroner's office, you know, and I, I get it. The coroner's office operates separately than the police department, separately than the prosecutor's office. But they all got to get on the same page and they've got to put one person in point of contact that can update the families and keep the families in the loop. Would it be um, protocol for the coroner to be able to speak to parents if the parents wanted that information? I mean, they're adults. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think that I've, I've heard that happen before. But again, you do it in conjunction with the investigators, because obviously there is stuff maybe in the coroner's reports that you don't want getting out, even to the family, yeah. um, at, le at least at this point in the investigation. So I think it's always good practice to coordinate between the coroner, the investigators and the prosecutors uh, that are all all on board already. And they all know each other. I'm sure they've all talked at some length together. So I think that it's good practice to be coordinating all of this information together so that you don't you don't get this this lack of information or different information, conflicting information going out to the families. So the other issue Brian uh, was able to break today was that that manager of the store said Kaylee and Maddie and her friends uh, were always in the store. He said I'd just seen them three weeks prior to, to them to their death. And he said that it was it was a it was a regular conversation he had about the stalker um, that the girls were worried that Kaylee was worried that they actually would walk in groups because Kaylee was worried that she would change her you know her behavior especially downtown and at that corner club bar which is the last place they were before the food truck before coming home and and being murdered and yet the police told us that they'd run every lead they could on the stalker and couldn't corroborate it but there's Brian you know he he found. A manager who said, I saw these girls all the time. I talked to them all the time. Yeah, I think, I don't know if they, they're parsing their words, but I, I think they probably have a lot of uncorroborated or what they think is uncorroborated information on, on stalkers or stalking behavior. It'd be very uncommon for college-age girls on this kind of campus who are very fun-loving and outgoing not to have the interest of guys that they're not interested in. And so I think that, you know, beyond the three victims that are deceased here, they have friends. And it, be, it would really shock me if the police didn't have the same information from some of their extended, you know, circle of friends. Because as you said, they've been talking among each other like this. They've been talking to that store manager. It's very conceivable that other friends knew about this behavior and knew about, you know, this person or persons. Um, and the police are, you know, maybe they're running out a bunch of leads that they haven't found a second or a third corroborating source for. But I, I, it's my thought that they probably are following this stuff. They just haven't gotten enough of it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.